Okay, so today we're gonna be doing the end of the year survey. I do this every single year. It was created by Perpetual Page Turner, which will be linked in the description of this video. And it's a series of 30 questions asking about asking a whole bunch of questions about your reading year. So I realize I'm a little bit late with this video, but here it is. I'm gonna try to do my best not to spend too much time on each answer since there's 30 of them. So all of the books that I discuss here, every book that I read this year, almost every single book that I read this year, I did a dedicated review for it. And if I didn't do a dedicated review, it was in a wrap up. So also in the description of this video will be a spreadsheet that has every single book that I read and a link to the review or wrap up that is attached to it. So if you want more information on any of those books, go check out that spreadsheet if you feel like it. My my friend Lynn, she organizes it and she's amazing. Question number one is best book you read this year. I did a best books of the year video already. A man called A Man Called Ove is my number one for sure. Question number two, book you were excited about and thought you were going to love more but didn't. So I, Tomie is a great example of this, which is a manga. I read Uzumaki and I loved it and I was so excited to read more of his work and I read Tomie and I really enjoyed Tomie, but I actually thought I was gonna enjoy it more than Uzumaki based off of the description and based off of the first half of the book. Oh my goodness, I loved it. And then it kind of petered off for me and didn't quite redeem itself in the end. So I was a little bit disappointed. I still enjoyed it but I thought I would like it a lot more than I did. Pirate Latitudes is another example of this. My friend Alec was really excited for me to read this because I love pirate stories and I love Michael Creighton and Creighton and uh, and this is his favorite Creighton book. And I, I it was okay, it was all right. Okay. And The Whispering Dead, uh, I, whew, I thought I was gonna love this book, man. It, the premise sounded amazing. Uh, this girl who is forced to, not forced, but she ends up staying in this in this little cottage on a cemetery and there are ghosts around and it sounded so speaky, spooky and creepy. And honestly, it just wasn't that good. It just, there's really not much to say about it. It just wasn't that great of a book. Question number three, most surprising in a good way or bad way book that you read. Elena really surprised me. Elena, The Last Adventure, First Adventure? really surprised me. I don't typically read very much middle grade. If I do read it, I usually kind of enjoy it, but I don't love it. Elena, I loved this book. It really shocked me how much I loved it. I even have, you know, some critical, I could tell you some things about this book that I think could have been improved upon. I don't care. I just had such a good time reading it and I still haven't continued the series. I even got the next book out from the library and then let it expire and had to return it. Genuinely, what's wrong with me? The posthumous memoirs of Braska Boss, of course, really surprised me as well because I picked it up on a whim, knowing nothing about it, and it ended up making my top books of the year list. Question number four, book you pushed the most people to read? Probably A Man Called Ove and One Piece. I would say that those are the two books. I mean, unless we're talking about The Lies of Black Lamora, which wasn't a read this year. So talking about things that I read this year, I did reread it. Things, okay, so Lies of, Lock, Lies of Lock Lamora, A Man Called Ove, and One Piece are probably the books that I've hyped the hardest and pushed the most. Also The Emperor Blade, also The Bone Shard Emperor. I mean, Bone Shard Daughter. I would, say, I would say that's a pretty comprehensive list of books that I've yelled the hardest about. Best series you started in 2020, best sequel and best series ender. Best series starter, The Ember Blade. Oh, actually, I read The Bone Shard Daughter this year too. I did technically read The Bone Shard Daughter this year as well, but, uh, uh, well, you know, Bone Shard Emperor will be my favorite sequel. So we're gonna say The Ember Blade, best starter. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. The Ember Blade was so good. And then sequel, The Bone Shard Emperor. Oh my goodness. I loved it so much. And then series ender. So here's the problem is that almost everything, I didn't finish very many series this year. I'm either in the middle of series or series are, are not completed yet. So as far as a series ender, the only two series that I completed this year were Red Rising and Red Sister. And honestly, neither one of those series are my series. I mean, I did enjoy both of them after the first book. I didn't enjoy the first book of either of those series very much, but because my friends enjoyed them and my friends were moving forward, I went ahead and continued with them. And I'm glad I did because books two and three for both of those series, I actually ended up enjoying okay, but they're still not the series for me. So which one do I like more? Well, technically Red Rising 
it was the completion of that trilogy, but that trilogy then moves on to more. So does that even count? Red Sister, I'm pretty sure, ended with the trilogy. Hmm. Which one did I like better? I may have enjoyed the Red Rising books two and three more than Red Sisters books two and three. So I think I'll go with that one. But really neither one of those are my series. Question number six, favorite new author you discovered in 2020? That's hard. I didn't discover Daphne du Maurier. I did discover like Chris, Christopher Wooding and, Chris, Wood, Chris Wooding and um, Andrea Stewart. I did discover both of them this year. I think, you know what, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with Junji Ito. The reason is because I read two standalones. Like with Chris Wooding, I only read one of his books. And although I do still have, I do still have, no wait, that's not even Chris Wooding. I, do, I, I read one of his books and then with Andrea Stewart, I read two of her books in the same series. But with Junji Ito, I read two of his books that were both separate from each other. So that feels better. I'm just gonna go with him. Question number seven, best book from a genre you don't typically read or was outside of your comfort zone? Ooh, I wanna say, I wanna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a couple answers. Treasure Island is my cousin's favorite book. And he gave me his, his copy of the book for me to read. And then he was actually on a reread too. So we passed it back and forth. And it was a really great, I really enjoyed it. And, and this kind of, adventure uh, sort of story isn't usually my thing. Um, I don't really know how to describe it other than that. Just, it was, it was an adventure story. It was, it's not usually the type of thing that I latch onto, but I did really enjoy the story a lot and the experience of reading it with my cousin also really helped. Also Kindred, um, I don't read very much sci-fi and I definitely don't read very much time travel sci-fi, but this was kind of a wibbly wobbly, not trying to be hard facts, not trying to explain things. It's just, it's sci-fi because, I mean, it's time travel because magic, even though it's sci-fi. Um, but you know what I mean? It was that kind of feeling and that worked for me. And it, you know, I am very character focused. I love have theme heavy books and Kindred just really hit me right. It almost made my top books of the year list. It was, it was right there. I really, really enjoyed this. And I'm gonna read more Octavia Buck Butler really soon. She's also an author I discovered this year that I'm really excited to read more of. And then A Silent Voice, I loved this short manga series. Um, I'm still super new to manga. I haven't read very many series, but I took a break from One Piece to read this. And it was so, it was so great. Again, I love theme heavy stories and this is really focused on bullying and the effects of bullying and it, and it focuses on those effects of multiple people. And I just really love the way this author dug into that. And again, this is another author that I discovered this year that I'm excited to read more from. She wrote, she's writing, um, she's currently writing To Your Eternity and I'm really interested in that one, but I'm waiting for her to get further into it before I pick it up. Question number eight, most action packed, thrilling, unput downable book of the year. Well, the Bone Shard series is really just getting me. It's just, I, I can't stop with it. But also, outside of something that I keep talking about, The Haunting of Hill House really surprised me. It's a short little horror book, but I could not put this book down. It was just the right levels of creepy and like a mind effing book where, you know, it was just like I, the characters in the house, there were little things that were happening that were like, no, we're making this up or no, there's a logical explanation to this. There was so many things in this book that I just, I could not, I couldn't stop. I was so, fully captivated by the story. Question number nine, a uh, book you re read in, in this year, have I been saying 2020? Whoops. That would be most like, th that you would be most likely to reread next year is A Man Called Ove and One Piece. Both of those will be reread for sure. Favorite cover of a book you read, <laughs> whoops, repetitiveness. It has to be the Moanshard daughter. I love this cover. In fact, I got this book because of the cover. Graphic designers, your job is important. You got me to this book. Question number 11, most memorable character of this year. Ove is definitely the most memorable character of this year, but I'll try to come up with someone else. The lead in Sword of Kaigon, actually. Um, 
I don't remember her name, but she really spoke to me. Um, we follow her in several different stages of life in a place where she's thriving, in a place where she's not, but she's doing her best, and then in a place of just really fighting for her people. Um, and in every stage that we followed her, I just found her so inspiring, how much of herself she gave and how much she how much she did for the people in her life and to and to find the goodness in her in in every situation that she's in or to to do her best in every situation that she's in um i could really dig into her character i found her extremely inspiring in every stage that we experienced with her throughout that book and then also imbot and inspensa are, are just dead giveaways for this for this uh, question. Spensa, like I've said many times, she is Teenage Murphy. I've read a lot of YA books and I've never actually felt like, oh yeah, that's me um, in a book before. Well, uh, on the fence, I did as well. But, but I've never felt so much like, that's me, I'm there, than I have in this, in this series. Like Spensa, she, get her and she her character means a lot to me and then Imbot is just a delight to be around and so is Doomslug. There's so many great characters. Um, question number 12, most beautifully written book this year. Frenchman's Creek. I love Daphne du Maurier's writing. Really no author writes in a way that hits me like du Maurier does. I think Frederick Bachman is another author that I could say that about but they hit me in different ways. But Daphne du Maurier, her prose is so capturing. I just, I I sink into the books that she writes. I'm there, I'm a part of it. And with Frenchman's Creek, it was a pirate adventure. And I was there, I was a part of it. I was on the ship. I was doing the terrible things that she was doing. She made so many bad choices and I was a part of it. And what was the question again, beautifully written? Well, maybe that maybe that's the wrong, maybe it should be like Piranesi or something like that because Piranesi is, is beautifully written. That should probably be the, but Frenchman's Creek. Most thought-provoking or life-changing book? Honestly, I might go with Still Alice. Still Alice is a story uh, about a woman with Alzheimer's or demen early onset Al Alzheimer's. And she, um, we follow her from her, from before her diagnosis to her diagnosis to, um, you know, years after and and uh, dementia runs in my family, um, and I have experienced it a lot in in different people. And and um, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like I understood being in the mind of of it's something that affects my family. So it's something that's very close and personal to me. It's a big reason why I love and every morning the way home gets longer and longer so much. Um, but with still Alice, I I just feel like I got really, really deep in, in the head. It just, it just made me see things a little bit more clearly and I really appreciated it for that. Question 14, book you can't believe you waited until this year to finally read. I'm gonna say Aloe of Law, uh, the second Mistborn series, uh, qu qu quartet. Um, I have been planning to read for so long. I keep saying I'm gonna read and I don't and I finally did this year. And while Aloe of Law wasn't my book, I, I liked it, I didn't love it. Books two and three, I enjoyed so much and I'm really, really looking forward to book four and, I, and I'm like, ah, oh, why did I wait so long? These books are great. They're, they are so much fun. Question number 15, favorite passage slash quote from a book you read in 20 and 21? I don't know. I do write down a lot of quotes from my books, but I don't know off the top of my head what my favorite would be and I'm not gonna dig through a bunch of books. Question 16, shortest and longest book. Uh, shortest is probably Piranesi. I don't actually keep track of my books the way I used to. I don't use Goodreads or anything, so I don't actually know. So either Piranesi or The Haunting of Hill House, I'm not sure which one is longer because I don't have Piranesi with me. Or, and then for the longest book, it would either be The Ember Blade or Dead House Gates. I have both of these here, so I'll look. The Ember Blade is 824 pages and Dead House Gates is, oh, 800 and... 36 winner. These pages are larger though, so who's to say? Question number 17, book that shocked you the most? Uzumaki. Uzumaki. It surprised me how much I enjoyed it, but also it's a very shocking book. Just 
generally. Question number 18, OTP of the year. What? One true pairing. Who, okay, I'm not much of a shipper. I don't really ship it, but um, oh, hey. Here's my copy of Treasure Island, isn't it pretty? Um, I would say, I'd say Natural History of Dragons. Um, I, I really like the couple in that book. They're great. Question number 19, favorite non-romantic relationship of the year. Can I say Locke and Jean? I technically, I technically reread the first two books this year. So technically I read it. So Locke and Jean forever will always be my answer. Question number 20, favorite book you read this year from an author you've read previously? Great! That would be A Man Called Obey by Frederick Bachman, my favorite author of all time, Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier, one of my other favorite authors, and One Piece by Oda. Why don't I know his first name? Ichiro. Ichiro. One Piece. I started it in December of 2020, so technically that counts. And I continued on with the series. Um, is there anything else that I would put on that list? No, I feel like that's a really solid list. Those are like some of my favorite books of the year. So I feel, I feel really happy about that. Technically this list goes on and it asks about a lot of other things, but, um, I don't wanna, so we'll end it there. The survey will be linked in the description if you wanna look through it, if you wanna answer some of these questions yourself, I would love to hear some of your answers for some of these. But until, I, if you don't feel like looking through the survey, please tell me what your favorite book was and what your most disappointing book was of the year. That's all I have for you. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday. I'll see you again soon, bye.